Teachers, I know you spend a lot of time marking your Mastercam projects and tests. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a tip that will help speed up this process, as well as allow you to provide better feedback to your students. All right, so a quick tip for the teachers out there. Uh, this will be especially useful for when you're marking projects and even grading tests. So personally myself, I found when doing this, one of the most time consuming aspects and one of the hardest parts I found to leave good feedback on was the actual geometry. So how do I quickly go through geometry, make sure everything is correct? And if something is incorrect, how do I go about providing good feedback, showing where that incorrect uh, piece of geometry is? So let's go ahead and get started. So I've got my file up here, a student submitted a part. It's been toolpath and drawn up. I can bring over the print for that part. And you can see I've got a lot of dimensions I need to check on this. So I've got some arcs, I've got some radii, skulls, uh, some bosses and everything. So checking this file going through drafting and snapping dimensions on it and verifying is going to be a lot of work so what most of you are probably doing already is just taking some geometry and overlaying it so what can happen and what can go wrong with that number one student did this project at home so they did it on the hle version of mastercam so this is a dot em cam file why does that matter well uh if i bring over some files here and I've got a Mastercam file I know is correct and I use this for teaching with so it's an MCAM file so that I can use it to create G code with. Uh, the problem is if I try and merge this into an EMCAM file I can't merge an industrial version into an education uh, so I can't overlay that. So what most will do is they'll take that Mastercam file export the wireframe geometry save it as a DWG and end up merging that in and that's what I'm going to do now I'll merge that in and here you can see the next uh, shortcoming in this uh, I've got two parts here but I don't know which one is the students I don't know which one is the answer I don't know what's correct and what's wrong in all this so I didn't really help myself out here very much so what I do is I have custom made geometry that when I merge it in it not only comes in in red, all teachers like to mark in red. So I come in, I bring my geometry in with a red color. And my geometry is also below zero. So most of the parts that students are going to be drawing, you're going to be drawing at Z0. The geometry that I saved is below that. Now, obviously, if we're talking about wireframe that needs to be checked in three dimensions, that doesn't work. Uh, but the point here is we can look at flat geometry because of the correct geometry is underneath of it things that are the same the student's geometry will show so only the incorrect geometry will show when the correct part is over top so here now we can quickly see let me just go ahead and green check this merge uh, we can quickly see the correct geometry and the incorrect geometry uh, now my geometry is also on a separate level i've put it onto its own level so then when i merge it in it won't merge into the same level as the student so i can easily turn my correct geometry off and easily turn it back on so now what's good about this obviously we know where the problems are it's easy to see and now it's very easy to give feedback to the student so we can do something like uh, open up our snipping tool and let's just grab a quick little screen grab of the overlaid geometry i can go ahead and copy this and let's say I've got uh, an Excel marking sheet started up, which we'll talk about in another video. Uh, I can easily go ahead and at the bottom of my marking sheet, paste in that snapshot of the geometry. If you want to resize, just click the picture, come over here to picture format, and you can resize this to fit better into your marking sheet if needed. Okay, so now the student can look at this and, and know exactly where they went wrong with their geometry. Now, as far as steps to fix that, that's a whole nother discussion, but at least they know where things uh, needed some extra attention. So now you may be thinking, oh, that's great. I just need to go back into all of my Mastercam parts, uh, make this wireframe all red, drop them all down in a separate uh, Z level, resave those all as DWGs, and I'm good to go. Uh, so I've got some good news there. If you are using Cam Instructor content, you will have access to uh, the teacher resources. So go ahead and hop into that uh, now. And in your 2022 MIL 2D resources, down at the very bottom, I've included now uh, Mike's answer key. So basically, go ahead and click on this. It will download a zip file. 
And then once extracted, you will have this correct geometry in red, lower in Z for all of the lesson and exercise files in MIL 2D. So that's lessons one uh, through to lesson eight. Again, including all the exercises. That is now at the bottom of your 2022 MIL 2D teacher resources. I'm also planning to add this in to the lathe resources as well. I uh, just want to wait for some feedback to make sure that those that are using this are finding this useful and uh, they actually want it. So if so, you know, please let me know if you're looking forward to something else like this in the lathe course. And I've also got stuff like this for uh, the 3D courses as well. Uh, we'll have to go through a separate video on checking solids. There's a few different things uh, I like to do there as well. Um, but again, I've got some solid reference files as well that we could include into the 3D uh, resources. So that wraps up this quick little tip today for the teachers. And since I've got teachers here now, if you missed the last video talking about catching cheaters, uh, you might want to go and check that one out uh, as well.